Mr. President. The Republican Leader. Uh, today is December the 14th. Senate Republicans have spent months, literally months, begging our Democratic colleagues to stop fiddling with partisan nonsense and focus on two core things, the NDAA and government funding. I've been talking about the need for a strong National Defense Authorization Act all year long, all year long. I'm glad we're finally going to wrap up the basic governing duty that we have in the next few days. With respect to government funding, I was glad to hear Senator Shelby announced yesterday evening that negotiators have reached a bipartisan, bicameral framework for a full year government funding bill. Long-term continuing resolutions cheat our armed forces out of the resources and the certainty that our commanders and civilian leaders need to keep modernizing our forces, investing in crucial weapons, and outcompeting adversaries such as China. I'm glad that our Democratic colleagues finally accepted reality and conceded to the Republican position that we need to prioritize our national security. Republicans simply were not going to lavish extra liberal spending on the commander in chief's own party as a reward for adequately funding our national defense. It simply wasn't going to happen. Funding defense is a basic bipartisan duty of our government, not something that earns Democrats special treats. As Senator Shelby stated last night, the framework agreement doesn't mean the hard work is over. It means the hard work can finally start. It will take seriousness and good faith on both sides to produce actual legislation that follows the framework. Poison pills, especially far-left demands to overturn long-standing and common-sense policy riders, will need to stay away from the process. And even then, the calendar will still make this a challenging sprint. Our side has made it clear that the Senate has until December the 22nd to complete either a full-year funding bill or a short-term CR into early next year. That's the deadline, and those are the two options. If a truly bipartisan full-year bill without poison pills is ready for final Senate passage by late next week, then I'll support it for our armed forces, particularly. Otherwise, we'll be passing a short-term continuing resolution into the new year. Now, on a different matter, against the backdrop of punishing 13.8 percent cumulative inflation since January 2021, an open borders crisis, spiking deaths and drug overdoses, and surging violent crime from coast to coast, President Biden has decided his A1 priority needs to be, listen to this, cracking down on charter schools and harming the educational opportunities available to millions of low-income students in the process. Charter schools have long injected a huge dose of choice and competition into the schooling option available to low-income Americans and communities of color. This became especially true and especially important back during the pandemic. Big labor teachers unions spent the entire pandemic forcing government-run public schools to keep their doors shut long after private schools, parochial schools, and schools across Europe were all back operating safely in person. During this time, charter schools became a haven. They offered an escape rope out of the learning loss for kids who would otherwise have been left behind. No wonder that, according to one analysis, charter school enrollment has surged since the pandemic started, even as public school enrollments have fallen off. But sadly, whenever kids' best interests and big Lakers pocketbooks come into conflict, we know where most of today's Democratic Party, unfortunately, will come down. The Biden administration has dutifully written a harsh new regulation 
that would intentionally chip away at the federal charter schools program and strip funding from many public charter schools. President Biden and his team are trying to force charter schools to conform to a whole new set of top-down, one-size-all-fits rules that the teachers' unions want to be forced onto their competitors. The Democrats' rule is designed to hamstring charter schools and leave them more reliant on government bureaucracies in everything from what they teach to how kids get to school in the morning. Perhaps worst of all, they want charter schools' federal funding to be heavily contingent on whether the Democrats' federal bureaucracy agrees there is a need for their existence. This is a plan to take options away from parents, to take opportunities away from kids, to take choice away from families, and transfer that power directly to big labor bosses and big government bureaucrats. Yet another example of Democrats trying every trick to make ends runs around patients' rights in education, parents' rights in education, stripping power away from parents and handling it, handing it over to the bureaucrats. So I want to commend the Senator from South Carolina, Senator Tim Scott, for bringing forward a Congressional Review Act resolution to right this wrong. I would urge every member of the Senate to put families first and vote for Senator Scott's common sense resolution.